Is the mic on? Okay. On, on the way in, you received um, a list, and it has to do with videos. Um, the first one on the list, Lisa Brooks, if you find that name, you're then going to find like 10 others that go with it. Um, so I just put down the name once. And she, on the reverse side, it's just coincidence that she wrote a very academic book about King Philip's War, and then she put it on a YouTube presentation. And then the other one, that it's rather interesting. About a third of the way down is by David Norton. Um, he retired recently. His daughter was a teacher, uh, is a teacher. She asked him to um, take some pictures of King Philip's places. So he had nothing to do in retirement, I guess. So he clearly followed King Philip's entire path uh, throughout these years, took pictures of every place. They're up on YouTube. It's great with um, if you're doing anything in a classroom with it. Um, so that's just a, a note about that. Okay, the, the hazards. Um, the historical profession is changing markedly over the last 25 years about how they handle Native Americans. There was an article that I had tucked away from, a long, from well, 20 years ago, uh, and it listed as part of the article um, Native Americans from this area that served in the Civil War. I said, gee, that's, that's nice. And, uh, and I looked, and there were two from Brookfield. And I thought, gee, I'm going to find out something about them. So um, I did. And the results illustrate a couple of other points. Um, when the post um, Grand Army of the Republic first started, it's, it's what we call the BFW today. Um, they, they listed sketches of the people, and on this sketch, there were four hazards. In the book that I had referenced, there were two. So I said, hmm, wonder where the other two came from. And sure enough, I found out um, where one of them was, and he's on the honor roll in Brookfield, it was three hazards um, that served. And so I thought, well, we're, we're, getting, we're getting closer. Um, but when you look at where they served, for those of you that pay attention to this stuff, they served with the 5th Cavalry in Massachusetts. That was an all-black unit. That's where they got to go in. Um, if you start tracking census information, you'll see that that entire family is listed as being black. And that's how he could get into the Civil War and, and volunteer is by going in an all-black unit, all unit. So the 5th Cavalry was at uh, Point Lookout. It was a um, prison of war camp for Confederates. So I'm sure this unit must have loved to have been there. Uh, being the boss in charge. And then the fifth unit got sent to Richmond. So they were there at the time uh, Lee surrendered. Then the, the um, unit sort of broke up. Some of them went to Texas and some of them got um, discharged. Um, two, and uh, the four um, men in this case, two, two went to Texas and, and two came home and got discharged. So then I, I was looking at other things, and in Brookfield, um, there's a large monument at the cemetery um, to the people that served in the Civil War. And on that, there are three hazards listed. So now I'm in a situation where I wish Bob Wilder were here, because this fourth one that's listed on the sheet produced in Brookfield doesn't have this one of these gentlemen, it doesn't have him on the marker. And now, you know what I gotta do, I gotta go find out what happened and why he's not on the marker. Um, and it's, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's a simple mistake, but the things that happened in attempting to keep an old tradition in New England intact, and that was after King Philip's War, after, um, 
the Native Americans essentially disappeared and they were gone. And that thing, that scenario has played out for years. And I went back in, in preparation for this and I looked at some material that was written in the 1980s by really good historians. But it, it said the same thing, they were gone. Well, that's not the case. Um, there are, it, it's much tougher to determine in New England because they're in small groups and what we would know as tribes in many cases um, have, have disappeared and they've just started bringing them, bringing them back. Um, so anyway, the, the short version is that we did have um, Native Americans from Brookfield serving in the Civil War. They deserve all the credit they could get for it. We also have Native Americans from Brookfield serving in the Civil War and not listed on the marker. Um, that is the, I, could, I couldn't come up with a better example of how they get written out of history. And it's important to remember who gets written out of history and who gets written into history. And there's a clearly um, a difference in it. So with that, um, I just wanted to put that out. If I had done this two weeks ago, I wouldn't have been realizing that uh, we're missing one of the people, so we'll have to do some work. And if Bob were here and he were finding a veteran that wasn't listed, um, he would be after that, he probably would have had it done by now, and I, I wouldn't have to worry about it. Um, but anyway, okay, thank, okay, that's it, thank you.